Hello there, welcome to a chat with Ungainly Titan. Uh, despite the fact that I'm showing tanks in the background, this thing hasn't got anything to do with World of Tanks. At least not directly, but it is possibly of interest to the kind of people who play World of Tanks. Um, people who are interested in history or nerdy types in general. There's a couple of topics that I want to cover, and they're kind of reviews or comments about um, something that I've been watching recently on... Um, Netflix and other places. So once upon a time, a long time ago, I used to be quite a history buff, and I knew a lot about World War Two. I knew a lot about a lot of history, but I really knew a lot about World War Two. Also, knew a lot about the Napoleonic Wars, but World War Two was one of the areas that I knew quite a lot, and I'd read quite a lot, and I'd war gamed it quite a lot. However, over the years, that knowledge has uh, slipped away, and I've recently decided to do something about this and actually revise a lot of my knowledge. So I was going to hit the books and go back, but I saw um, World War II in colour on Netflix. And I thought I'd give it a look. It uh, looks like it would revive my um, overview of the war anyway and provide me with a decent overview. And I might have something new to say that I hadn't seen anywhere else. It didn't really have anything new to say. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward narration of the war. Um, it covers all the theatres and all the actors and it starts back into the 1920s the roots of fascism um, which is a reasonably good episode if people didn't know that aspect of the war but it doesn't cover any particular topic of depth and it doesn't really get very well into the whys and the why so's of particular events um, so good enough overview um, reasonable now I did c catch several narration errors Typical narration error would be just simple mistakes in words. Um, obviously the people involved, the people doing the narration, would necessarily be familiar with uh, World War II or experts in any way. So an example I've had was that in the Soviet steamroller episodes where the Soviets are steaming through Eastern Europe and reconquering Western USSR, um, there's a reference to a pocket containing 50 pounds of divisions. Now I don't think the Germans had 50 pounds of divisions at any point during the war, but it probably meant 50 divisions of all different types and probably of different uh, nationalities as well, although most likely mostly German. Which would still be a substantial force. You'd be talking about, depending on the strength of divisions, and from 200 to 500,000 men. Although given the time period in the war, it's probably closer to 200,000 than the 500,000. But still, that's a substantial army trapped in an area. But there's a, there's a couple of other errors like that. They're generally the ones that I know is relatively small. Now, there's a lot of recycling of footage, so I wouldn't necessarily um, believe that the footage is always taken of uh, what is it, whatever they're talking about. Um, it's appropriate in the sense that it's in somewhere in the general vicinity in the, or in the general time frame, but it might not have anything to do with what they're specifically talking about. Uh, and there's a fair bit of recycling of the footage. I also thought that the colorization process generally wasn't worth it. You notice it less and less as the series goes on, but a lot of the early, um, the pre-war stuff and the early war stuff uh, looks appallingly bad. Probably because the underlying black and white film wasn't exactly anything to write home about in the first place. And um, it was pretty grainy. So when it was colorized, it looks absolutely terrible um, my opinion they'd been better off not bothering and the other series that I've watched uh, recently and I've got my hands on because I've been looking for it quite a while is the old 1970s uh, Thames TV series The World at War this one I first saw as a kid oh probably 40 years ago um, and I remember being really impressed by it at the time and it was uh, the core of my knowledge of World War 2 for quite a while um, it is out on DVD, but I haven't been able to lay hands on a copy. I was checking on and off over the last number of years, uh, but it's recently become available, and I spotted it on Amazon, and I purchased a copy. Now, I've only watched three episodes on the first disc, and uh, I'm already impressed. Now, it is... It's actually very good on both the why and what happened, um, because you're far back enough in time to actually be able to interview people who were there or to rely on interviews that existed of people who were there. And I mean, not just uh, younger people who remember the war, but actual people who were involved in major events. Um, 
there's people being interviewed in, in the second episode or the third episode where uh, Churchill takes power and uh, Chamberlain has been steps down from office in the upheavals in the British government um, and uh, these people were there there were people who were MPs or senior officials in the various political parties or assistants to um, senior ministers and stuff like that there's also a very um, open account, say for instance the Norway campaign, uh, about both the um, ineptitude of the British expedition to Norway and of the ruthlessness on the British and French parts to willingness to violate Norwegian neutrality for their own strategic interests. Uh, so it's not pulling any punches. Now, it probably isn't as in-depth as a, again, like a good scholarly work or uh, maybe reading multiple scholarly works, but still I think is well worth the view and well worth the look. And I definitely enjoyed it. I don't intend to stop there just with those two uh, uh, DVDs though. I intend to actually go back, like I said, and read some of the books that I have uh, still. And maybe repurchase books that I did have once and no longer possess. And if anyone wants to recommend a particular tome... Um, of modern scholarship, not the older stuff, but the more modern stuff, stuff in the last 10 or 15 years on World War II, I'd be definitely interested in hearing about it, and I might add it to my Amazon wish lists of um, stuff that I might get around to reading at some point. There's always the time factor, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. Finally, on my Netflix, this is in Ireland, um, Star Trek Discovery appears on the Netflix axis, and... I've watched the first two episodes, and, well, the first episode drove me nuts. Um, it's nothing to do with the story per se. Um, it's just the kind of stuff that really annoys me about sci-fi writers and sci-fi um, series. And Star Trek has been guilty of this before. I um, I actually stopped watching the... Um, First run of The Next Generation, not the first, but season three or season four of The Next Generation um, when it was running on my local TV stations because of the sheer amount of Technobabble and the fact that they were using different Technobabble to solve essentially the same problem each time um, with just more Technobabble. But one of the things that really annoys me about these kind of series, and it, like I said, it happened in The Next Generation and it's happened within about what, 15, 10 minutes maybe of the opening episode of Star Trek Discovery is that the complete failure and the part of the writers to appreciate the kind of technology that we have today that's not just military spec stuff you can go and buy this off the shelf you can go down to a local hardware shop you can go on Amazon and you can buy stuff that will solve problems that they're having in Star Trek uh, and Star Trek would have 400 years of development that said, Star Trek with 400 years of advanced development still haven't discovered the equivalent of a fuse. Now, I know um, it's supposed to be fluidic power or some crap like that, but um, there's a fluidic equivalent of a fuse. It's called a pressure release valve. Why can't they use them? I am, of course, referring to the exploding console phenomenon, uh, which explodes at enough strength to give a guy a severe concussion that he actually gets lost wandering around his own starship. However, what really ticked me off is um, very early on in the first episode they discover an anomaly which has some kind of weird scattering field which nullifies or negates all their sensors um, and there's a debris field surrounding this which prevents them from manoeuvring too close to it with a shuttle but um, and it's very high radiation and then they invent a completely gobbledygook radiation sickness when normal radiation sickness is bad enough and would do perfectly well as an explanation. But anyway, the and the other thing is, of course, that a character with that kind of radiation sickness wouldn't be able to get up and run around um, a spaceship doing stuff. But anyway, that's a separate rant and I don't really want to get into that one. The problem is that they need to see what's going on inside the scattering field. Um, or at least they feel the need to see what's going on inside the scattering field. Because otherwise the rest of the episode wouldn't unfold. And the, our intrepid um, EXO uh, volunteers to fly through 
the scattering field in a space suit. And I'm just thinking, why could they not just chuck a couple of GoPros in? Um, if the anomaly was small enough, they could just maneuver the shuttle one side, chuck them out the back of the shuttle, and then collect them when they came out the other side. I mean, they got tractor beams and all sorts of fancy doodads. So once it was cleared the scattering field after nine or ten hours, um, they just picked them up and um, use them. I mean, it's Star Trek, and I mean at this stage maybe their equivalent of golf probably about the size of a grain of sand, and they could just blast a thousand of them out of an air cannon or something you know uh it's just a thought they should really hire one of the guys in mythbusters uh, i'd recommend jamie heineman to sanity check some of the stuff that they're coming up with uh you know in terms of what can be done today with today's technology okay that's enough ranting for one day i'm gonna stop here thank you for watching i if you found the video enjoyable please give it a like and if you haven't subscribed to the channel consider giving the channel a subscription and i'll catch you all again soon